Hi, hey, and hello there. Obi-Han here, and welcome back to the Comic High Ground. All right, what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about She-Hulk, episode two. And no, there will not be a non-spoiler section of this review this time because, well, this is a review, and you should really expect spoilers for a review. So let's start. The episode begins with Jennifer approaching a bar, and it's like this She-Hulk celebratory party. Obviously, because she saved everybody's lives there. So she transforms into She-Hulk and walks in. And they're all celebrating or saying She-Hulk, something along those lines. And she has a problem with it because of the name. She doesn't like the name She-Hulk with it because it's like derivative of Hulk or whatever, whatever complaint she had, which, again, is another one of those red flags like I talked about in the first episode. Luckily, this is the only one in this episode that I can remember. So, again, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But... As they're celebrating, she's approached by her boss, who tells her that their case was thrown out due to the fact that she transformed into She-Hulk and saved everybody's lives. They basically use that as leverage to say that the bi- the jury would be biased towards her. So they threw out the case. Not only that, but her boss fired her because she was too much of a spectacle or something along those lines. And that's one of those things, it's one of those superhero tropes where your superpowers get in the way of your personal life. And, you know, it's just one of those back and forth that they have. Obviously, you see it a lot. But Jennifer kind of gets depressed. She goes on this job hunt, and everybody's kind of telling her the same thing about her being a distraction or a liability because of her powers, that kind of thing. And there's this scene where her and her friend are kind of sitting on the couch looking through job ads and everything. And her friend, I believe her friend looks in a newspaper, and in the newspaper there's this ad for a man in a cage fight with metal rods coming out of his hands um so that's more than likely an easter egg for wolverines which would make it another mutant easter egg in the mcu so that's great i guess (laughs) but jennifer another funny thing jennifer has a lock screen on her phone and it's a picture of cap's butt which further cements that she's basically obsessed with captain america so that's funny but Moving forward, she also goes to visit her family and has this nice heart-to-heart with her father where he's trying to give her some advice. But the problem is she's kind of talking too much. And apparently that's just one of the things that Jennifer does, at least in this episode. She talks too much. And we'll see it later on when she's talking to somebody else. But eventually she shuts up and he gives her her advice and then she's on her way. Um, Then at another bar, she is approached by another firm. Ironically, it's the firm that she had just went against in the first episode, and he wants to offer her a job because this firm he works for is a firm that represents superhumans, and they want a superhuman to be the face of their firm. And that's great. The only caveat for her is that she has to be in She-Hulk firm. I'm sorry, She-Hulk form the whole time, which is not something she really wants to do, but she needs a job, so she's going to have to take it. Her first case is to take on Emil Blonsky as her client. And that's obviously an immediate point of contention because Emil Blonsky is Abomination, the same Abomination who tried to kill her cousin, Bruce, in The Incredible Hulk. And in her defense, she is very against it. She's like, this this is the guy who attacked my cousin. You can't think that I'm going to take his case. Well, they kind of force her into it but they at least tell her to visit him and see for herself how he is now so she visits the prison and it's kind of this funny scene well funny ish where she gets there and the guy's like we don't we can't allow you to walk in there looking like that or you know being in that form so she turns back she has to turn back to jennifer which is obviously a direct contrast to the fact that she has to be in she hope form when she's at work so obviously they're kind of playing with those themes there But she walks in, she has this conversation with Emil, and he's telling her that he's this changed man and that he's peaceful now and he just wants to live his life peacefully. And he has this book of haikus that's like apologies to everybody he's done wrong and things of that nature. So Jennifer kind of ponders on it, and eventually when she gets home, she calls Bruce, and she's trying to tell Bruce that she's going to take the case. And Bruce is basically trying to respond to her and say that you know it's cool it's fine I I don't mind but again it's a situation where she's just talking too much and she won't let him get a word out so obviously again this episode is driving in the fact that she just talks too much 
And I wonder if it's going to be one of those things that they continue to do throughout the series. Or was it just a one-off for this episode? Because she didn't do it in the first episode, really. She was just hard-headed. But this one is just, she just keeps talking. She won't shut up. <laughs> so we, we'll see how they handle that going forward with her character. But the interesting thing, and probably the most interesting thing about this episode, is you see Bruce finally when it pans away from how the close-up shot with him. And he's on the same ship that attacked him in the first episode. So it looks like he's going back to Scar, Sakar to handle whatever it is or whatever reason it was that they were attacked or I'm sorry, they weren't attacked. The ship just got in their way. I don't think they fired on them, Uh, at least not to my knowledge. So I have to go back and look at that. But yeah, the same ship that got in their way in the first episode is the ship that he's on heading to Sakaar, which the implications for this, as everybody is saying, is that this might mean that there's a Planet Hulk story coming along, which is very exciting in itself because Hulk in that story was just vicious, like... That guy was was he was cutthroat. He basically kicked kicked ass and took names. Or in Mantis's case, he kicked names and took ass. Okay, yeah, I kind of see why Tony made that face. Anyway, yes, this storyline is one of those that's really beloved, especially for Hulk fans. So hopefully, if they do do it, the MCU doesn't mess it up or water it down. Right now, we're dealing with a Hulk that's. As, you know the smart Hulk that's very much so docile compared to even the Hulk of the MCU so they're gonna have to do something whether he rages out in that form and becomes like a mixture of his angrier self with his smarter self or just it's just flat out rage who knows but if you're gonna attack with the planet Hulk story you definitely have to do it right because Hulk like I said he took he took down everybody everybody on Sakaar he took down everybody on Earth when he came back like everybody, no one stopped him. Strange couldn't stop him. Tony couldn't stop him. The Fantastic Four couldn't stop him. The entirety of the X Men couldn't stop him. He was just this force that could not be stopped. Even Jennifer tried, but again, he was just kind of an, an unstoppable force. But back to She Hulk. Basically, after this, after she talks to Hulk and we get to see him in a spaceship, she tells her boss that she's going to take on Emil Blonsky's case. Right afterwards, she sees on TV that there's this whole controversy about Emil Blonsky being in these underground fights, and there's footage of it, which is obviously a problem for her since she literally just took on his case, which means that it's something she has to deal with now as his, as his attorney. And we know what these underground fights are, right? And it's, it's the same underground fights from Shang-Chi. So that's probably where Wong is going to fit in. He'll probably be there in the next episode. We'll see. All in all, this episode, it wasn't good per se, but it wasn't bad either. It was literally that meh in the middle situation that we were talking about. So we will see. I'm really hoping the show gets better. Obviously, we know Daredevil is going to pop up in here at some point, And I hope that they do him justice because Charlie Cox, obviously, is basically the definitive Daredevil. And he did such a great job on that Netflix show. Hopefully there's still some type of semblance of that character here when he appears in She-Hulk. We'll see. But basically, that's my review for episode two of She-Hulk. Not great, not bad, just meh. So if you liked the episode, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you all next time. And remember, we have the high ground.